morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Games, also known as uh, Dr. of Ghetto, as my politics related advocacy name online. Uh, this will be a Dr. of Ghetto video, uh, and as well as a political video, more of a predictions video, particularly in regards to war and, uh, and aggressions, and a little politics here and there. Here's the situation. Okay. As the title stated, we may have World War III. And it'll be China versus the U.S. That's the main uh, set or the main versus roster of this war. Not sure when this is going to happen. Not sure where exactly of the battleground will be. Whether it's going to be at China or the U.S. or in the Middle East. But we have come to some conclusion or prediction at least that China will owe... Will owe now, oh, you, the United States will owe lots and lots of money to China for the next several decades from here on out. And uh, especially since, what, since the 1990s, maybe? For what my teacher, I wish I could say his name, but I don't want to give out his real name. But let's call him um, Taz, just to cover up his actual name. Taz, Mr. Taz, I'd call him as far as, like, you know, the wrestler Taz, but he's not black, he's just white, he's a veteran, you know, of the Air Force. He knows who I'm talking about, if he's still alive, that is. Mr. Taz, quote-unquote Taz, told the class, if not me, in fifth grade, in 1997, people, that China will be number one by the 2020s. And he was right. Now... My prediction, after realizing this for the last several hours of my, for myself, talking to people online, specifically with one other uh, Xbox user, obviously, he's still learning, growing up and stuff like that, but he's learned a lot lately, and uh, his name, I call, let's call him Ram, I'm sorry Ram, it's been to your, part of your identity somewhat, some way, you know, I told him about the China situation at one point, and uh, this explain that explains to the other guys, but... Excuse me, it's a little hot. It's getting hotter out there. And uh, anyway, so basically, this prediction I'm, I'm making, I know it's not set in stone. But I know for one thing, sir, something's going to happen with this matter. Because there's no way that Donald Trump with Obama, Bush, and, and start with Clinton, that would Donald Trump overspend the living crap out of these bailouts and these stimulus checks for the last few weeks now. It was 2.3 trillion last time we heard that he, that Trump or whoever is in charge or all three branches of government agreed upon this matter to give out a thousand two hundred dollars. And I thank the government, thank you. But the long term is going to be horrible. I can't imagine 2.3 trillion dollars that they took out within a matter of a certain amount of time. That's crazy. Now, I'm also hearing that Nancy Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, she's the add-on to this. This totals up to three trillion dollars for an additional five hundred billion, maybe another trillion dollars to the stimulus package overall for this pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic, all because they shut down the economy, the United States government, and the states, the state of each state government, especially you, Como. I hate, hate what you did, what you did to the New York economy. Was now said I can't get a job after the situation, or I can't get a decent job after the situation, even with a degree. That's the fucked up part. You deliberately started this, Como, Bush, Clinton, because Como's been around for uh, and been around for decades with his grandfather or father, and Bush with H W with the CIA and John F. Kennedy and Prescott Bush with uh, the Nazis and the World War Two. All you guys had your hand in it. And I'm sick and tired of knowing all this shit. And I want to do something about it. But you're lucky I can't do nothing about it. You're so lucky. I'm not going to fucking go crazy like you motherfuckers yet. Oh, you're so lucky. Thanks to Obama. Found out all that shit about that Obama Malcolm X shit. You're so lucky I can't, I can't start shit like you do. <sighs> Imagine. You people. You politicians who've been around for decades fucking up this country and I'm just a nobody finding this stuff out within 10 years in a 10 year span oh sure beforehand I should know something about the problem but I was only a kid I heard about things here and there the war in Iraq 9-11 I saw 9-11 on TV you know the, the Twin Towers I also hear that spot where you mentioned about that 
WTC7 bill was about to fall down soon. That was around 4 o'clock you said that on live on TV to those uh, firemen out there. But that was then. This is now, right? Who cares about your past? Who cares about what happened back 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, even 100, uh, 75 years ago back during World War II with Prescott Bush, that is? That's fine. But with this China US thing, it's all about adding up, building up to that point. Because since the Federal Reserve was passed in 1913, I'm sorry guys, but the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 was passed, thanks to Woodrow Wilson, and the Federal Reserve was created and everything else with the World War I, that helped the United States gain power over other countries at first. They were the superpower, the first ever superpower, if you want to call it like that. Then comes the USSR. Now they've been diminished since 1990s, early 1990s to be more exact. And the US was getting dominant. Spread all these wars and aggressions, the Iraq War, Afghan War, Lebanon, Georgia, not Georgia the state or Georgia in the United States here. We're talking about Georgia, the country over by uh, Europe. The, was it Southwest Europe area, somewhere around there, around Southeast Russia, something like that. It was somewhere around there. So, so all this is happening. Then we come down to the point of uh, owning China, money to them with the treasuries. Peter Schiff says it plenty of times, or he said one time at least, from what I could tell, that we owe money to China now tremendously. So imagine, sorry guys, I have these bugs and shit. It's getting hotter and hotter, more bugs coming out of nowhere, but anyway, it's getting hotter and hotter for it to, um, I mean, as far as like the war is concerned, uh, the possible war, like hotter and hotter, like it's getting, like, you um, know, it's getting, in essence, it's more like, become, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought after that. Uh, it's getting very escalated to a point that China and the United States will go to war. And somehow, some way, the battleground is going to be either the United States or the Middle East. Because I'm sure China has their hand in the Middle East somehow, some way, with one side of the group. Because you know how, like, during the Syrian Revolution or the Syrian Civil War that's going on now, like, Russia has their hands with Assad, while the United States has the, the ISIS rebellious re the rebellion against Assad, you know, feed in the war to them on that side. So it's kind of like that, and we're gonna spread out through the United States, throughout the Middle East in a grandstand type of set situation. And China will play somehow, some way into it, or are gonna attack the United States personnel. I, I know it sounds very weird for me to say this stuff. It's all about possibilities right now, uh, and this may span anywhere between now and thirty years, maybe twenty years, at least fifteen years from now. There's no way that. All these treasuries that the that the the government is making, China is buying them as we go along. This is what I was. This is what I heard ten years ago, after the financial crisis. Forty percent of that wealth was gone in the in the world's economy. That's why there's fewer jobs, fewer opportunities, or fewer good paying jobs out there. And it's hard on how to get those good paying jobs because. There's more and more people with more and more degrees, more other certificates, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's like you, who's average 35, 40 year old, trying to get a, a job as a what a manager at, at Microsoft, one of the, one of the Microsoft um, job managers, what do you want to call them? Manager, pretty much, you know. They were like, oh, yeah, you're going to make $20,000, $30,000 a year and go fuck yourself. Here's a job. Then that's it. <laughs> and you owe like tens of thousands of dollars worth of. Of uh, of uh, student loan debts and still under forbearance, not not the the deferments. So that's like me, you know, in a sense. I mean, I'm only 32, but you you get the idea. So with this idea, China and the U.S. something has to give, and Russia will team up with China, will team up with India, Canada might team up with us. They'll be like, they'll be like, mm mm. We're not, we're not, we're, I'm with the Queen of England. I mean, England would might help us out here and there, France. But, and Germany, well, they kind of going to be in the neutral ground, literal neutral ground, because they'd be like, because we actually hit 
aided Germany for many decades, and Germany was the was our our enemy, so it kind of dominated them in World War II somewhat, with the raiding and stuff to go out to help out the the Jews during the Holocaust. So they gonna be like they were like this too. Um, who else will be involved? Who else? Spain will help. Will may may be on our side. Portugal maybe. Af African continents. I don't know. African continent. I don't know what's going on with them. They had their internal Africa person versus Africa person conflict with the military commandos going up against each other. Very military police of sorts. Private military police versus private military police. So they got their own problems. So fuck. See, we can no worries with Africa for the time being. They got their own poverty, all that stuff. I know it sounds cruel and unusual to say that, but it, trust me, it's not going to be a war with the war. But uh, it could be a turn out to be an actual world war with them, you know. But it's like a North Africa with their World War Two. Like, what's the, how'd that get there? That battleground. You know what I'm saying? So. But Hitler wanted to take over the entire world in his perspective. So what, for what we're told, as a mainstream, of uh, course, or mainstream talkative point. So it's, yeah, guys, this is going to be iffy for the next few decades because there's no way us as an economy, us as a U.S. economy or as, as a U.S. entity if, as of this economy going to stay intact properly. Because the more money you spend right now, and you don't have the money to back up, to pay it back, the more likely you'll be bankrupt, forbearance, and or dissolved. Chapter 11 or Chapter 7 style bankruptcy. That means China will just buy you out, and the United States government will be like, fuck you, we're not taking that. Some politician might say that. It could be Trump. I doubt it. That's like four years from now, though. Three years from now, not even... We're talking about 15 years from now, I'm talking about. But, you know, if Trump really wants to start World War III, that means the United States military will be out of shape, out of combat, prop, uh, proper um, combat ready. So they got to use the exosuits, which has been saw in Advanced Warfare. I'll link the links down below of Advanced Warfare, of the China, India, Russia collusion, if you want to call it like that. Because they've been talking about this prior, during the 2008-2000 economic crisis. India wanted to deal with China. Russia wanted to deal with China. And India, personally themselves, was saving up with uh, gold. Approximately about $2 billion worth of gold. If not, at least a $1 billion worth of gold. Or it could be two tons of gold or one ton of gold. Which is kind of strange. That sounds so little to, in comparison to, you know... Because a country could just get billions upon billions of, of dollars in gold. That's going to be about into the tens of tons, you know, some shit like that. Because the gold at the time was about uh, $1,900 of an ounce, approximately. Because I bought an ounce of gold, or two ounces of gold at most, for about, well, like a, a thousand, thousand two hundred dollars I could be wrong about the the exact amount I bought. It could be, it has to be at least an ounce of gold and about five ounces of silver. And it was pretty cheap to buy back then. Thanks to minus resources, but minus resources, I'm not sure if they're still in business or if they're on because of the COVID nineteen debacle, so that I'm gonna have trouble doing interactions with their customers. So, you know, thanks to uh, John O'Toole, I recommend him to uh, give him a call or ask for him at minus resources. There's no sponsorship, but this is based on my experience, my experience at the time of 2009 with John. So if he sees this, he might understand where I come from. And he might give his own perspective on, over an interview. So if he's watching this, you know, give me a call. We'll make an interview, predict what you think of this China versus United States World War Three, and we'll take it from there. Get my number, Mr. O'Toole, so yeah, I'm still there. I'm still here. <laughs> Number is still here. So, <laughs> so we have to come to some conclusion for this prediction again that the United States versus China is inevitable in my perspective. It sounds very far fetched with all this political climate over the decades into the recent 10 years or 15 years with the Iraq War, Afghan War, and the Vietnam War. We're going to go back that further and 
fucking uh, Obama's birth records, that can be iffy too, because China could use that against the, the United States government somehow. So like, or Biden with his with his sexual scandal. I don't, to be honest with you, that's just feeble stuff. That's like trivial to China. But it can be an add on to that matter to like say, like, hey, we covered up your ass with a lot of shit. You better owe us something in return. You know what I'm saying? Like, China almost had their hands in all with these scandals. Let's be honest now. The FISA warning and the uh, Hillary Clinton emails and fucking that driver, chauffeur for uh, Feinstein. That chauffeur for Feinstein was a, was a spy for the Chinese government. That's how indebted or in depth they are into this government of the United States. So this can be some on on the ground type of battle here in the United States. I'm not sure where exactly. Could be in Washington, New York City here, Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, California. It could be in Texas, you know, remember the Alamo. It could be in Michigan, Chicago, you know, whatever, no, right? All these possible places. Florida, maybe? I can understand, oh, I can definitely understand China on the east. Oh, I was in the east, so they go from east to west. So west coast, they'll start with, they go, they go into the United States to start battles. So the possibility, West Coast, they'll start with of the United States, Hollywood, Oregon, San Francisco, Southern California, you know, those places, obviously. So that's my prediction. And I uh, hope that uh, if Peter Schiff, Mark Farber, Gerald Salente, um, obviously Bob Chapman passed away, you know, rest in peace him. If they're still alive, and obviously they are, and if uh, they're still relevant, obviously they are too, then they can they can rehash this if they want. They can t talk about this further in their perspective. I'm sure they got a better perspective than I do. This is based on what these guys have been saying for years. I've listened to Gerald Sante since as early as 2008, Peter Schiff as well, uh, Mark Farber as well, Alex Jones as a radio show host with Bob Chapman that he brought him on every week. Back in 2009 to 2010, maybe 2011. So it's, you know, I'm just saying, anything's possible. If uh, Trump is listening to this personally, which I doubt it, I'm sure he has listeners, like one of those informants that keep post about the internet. If he, if those people have him listen or hear him, what I say directly to them, to his, you know, to it as relay message, you should not spend too much, too much anymore. I appreciate the stimulus check, and I'm sure my my friends, my family appreciate the stimulus checks. But we can't, we we have to stop spending before it's too late. If you gave us another thousand dollars, I mean, I would still take it, yes. But I'm gonna be like, am I gonna have a job for within the next five years, ten years, fifteen years? A proper, decent job that pays off bills, pays off rent, pays off food. Do I have to rely on the pantry? Do I have to rely on food stamps? Do I have to rely on, on disability? Uh, and then WIC, if you're a mother with like children and babies. That, I mean, yeah, I have to come to that conclusion. And I'm sure there are some people out there, um, or at least a couple of my contacts, who are just my friends or whatever, but will say like, oh yeah, you're not a point, Charles, you know. I'm, you know because, because some of these people are just cashiers and you know, they've been out of the job, or not out of the job, but they still are considered to be like on hold for not making as much money, and, and now have to rely twice as much on the on the pantry, twice as much on WIC. The government is trying to destroy us with our self-efficiency, with our self-reliability. And at first, I didn't like it. I was working at the time. I was back in 2009. So I was like, damn, all this stuff is going on, these welfare checks, and free this and free money and free stat checks because i received in 2008 that that stimulus check again i know right the stimulus check from like 12 13 years ago right 2008 of april george bush gave each american 300 dollars compare that to a thousand two hundred dollars in today's time that is so much different than it was 10 years ago why so much now one thousand two hundred dollars and three hundred dollars oh sure we had that there was something wrong with the banks with Lehman Brothers and Wells Fargo at one point. Uh, well, not Wells Fargo, Washington Mutual. They were diminished or they combined with uh, JPMorgan Chase or some other major bank 
I'm not sure which one of them though exactly. So this is like this, this is a big accumulation over 10 years, 15 years. And uh, it could be longer, you know, of the 10 years, 15 years into the next 10, 15 years. So it's like, I, it sounds like I'm being, um, I'm being very picky or being very uh, pessimistic and very uh, fussy and fuzzy. Uh, it's just that if you just read what I read, if you just like see what I see, and I'm sure plenty of you guys out there did, with on this internet, <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on, on the internet that tells you the truth of many things, or at least decipher the truth, or decipher what you read and turn it into the actual conclusion of the truth. That's the Puff Box, CNN, ABC, those TV shows or stations of news. They're not telling us the whole story, and they will never tell us the whole story. Uh, they'll tell you, tell you a part of the truth, especially in Fox, MSNBC, but was like ABC and MSNBC, not even MSNBC, uh, ABC and, uh, well, maybe ABC that gives you some truth in the morning time. That's about it. Other than that, they're not really, uh, this just broadcast other than news, so. But, hmm. This doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all, guys. Pray. Prepare, as always, you know. We don't have always have the time to pray and prepare. Uh, but we do have time to, uh, you know, take it, uh, take it ease. You know, it's peaceful right now. Everything's fine. DMX gave us some words of encouragement, you know, with uh, the reading from the Bible about the, there are times of peace and times of war. How about that in scripture? I think it was. So that was a good thing. I like that about DMX. Um, as always, it's going to be on BitChute, this video. Is that going to be on YouTube? Because I'm, I'm not giving YouTube credit let alone attention to, to them, from them, or to them, or however that goes, for them to recognize this video on YouTube. Because I don't get views from my political videos on YouTube. So, screw them, right? <laughs> Alright, guys. Thumbs up. Subscribe and share. I'm going to do a Medal of Honor recording, gameplay sometime later this morning, or this afternoon, or evening. So, I have to... I already did part of my checkpoints on my classwork this morning, so no big deal, right? But I'm going to try to rest a little because I haven't, I haven't done much sleeping. just been listening to a lot of podcasting. So, all right, guys. See you later. Bye.